Welcome everyone to the Art of Collection Management, broadening community engagement with Artwork Archives online exhibitions. Uh, thank you for taking the time to join us today. I have a few housekeeping items before I jump into the webinar. Um, first, you all are doing it, filling out the poll so we can know who is on this webinar, introducing yourself in the chat. The chat is also a great place to contact Emily, my wonderful colleague who has joined us. If you have any technical issues, um, please use the chat for that. This webinar will be recorded. You should have had a message when you joined. We're going to share the recording tomorrow after the presentation. It will also be available on our blog and on our YouTube channel and links will be provided at the end of the session to those two channels. You'll also receive the slides via email as well. I have some links in the PowerPoint that will hopefully be of help. And um, I've saved time at the end of the presentation for your questions. So please feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A below. If you are an, on an iPad or a phone, you may have to access it by clicking the three dots. But please post your questions in the Q&A. I uh, would love to hear from you and get to those at the end of the presentation. Before we start, I am going to provide a brief overview of Artwork Archive if you are not familiar to us. If you use us, welcome back. I'm glad that we can put some faces to the, the team. We are an online art collection management system based in Denver, Colorado, and we work with artists, collectors, and collecting institutions all over the world to help them organize, manage, and share and showcase their artworks. And a bit about me, my name is Elysian McNiff Kogelmeyer, and I'm the head of growth at Artwork Archive. I'm the daughter of artists, art therapists, art educators, so the creative process has always been in my blood. I have worked in the arts since graduating from Middlebury College, and an expedited version of my CV is that I've worked in art museums, I've run public art programs, made online art classes, have written for art publications, served as curator, and I got my master's in public humanities at Brown University. And because of this background, I work primarily with our nonprofit clients here at Artwork Archive and generate our educational resources. So who are all, all of you? <laughs> uh, Emily, do you wanna recap the, the poll uh, so we can see who's here? Sure, so it looks like 56% uh, of you are currently using Artwork Archive, 4% are on free trial, and 41% are new. Hello, welcome, so happy that you're here. Uh, the majority of our attendees right now who are not uh, working for an other type of organization are working for a commercial gallery at 13%, 11% are with a public art program, 9% are with an academic institution and 7% are with an art center. Ooh, sorry. And 16% are with a small museum or historical society. So that's actually coming in as our second uh, most popular workplace. And 55% um, of you already have a public presence, uh, either through a website or another platform. 41% uh, are still private and 4% are not sure. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Love adding that one. Well, thank, thank you, Emily. I'm going to close out the poll. So great to meet you all virtually and um, hear about your experience with Artwork Archive, hear where you're coming from. I'm guessing a couple of those others are um, other types of art professionals and artists. Welcome. I hope this presentation works for everyone. So with that, um, in my last webinar that I hosted with Emily uh, in December, I made a joke that an entire presentation could be made on online exhibitions, a tool that we launched last year. So here we are, <laughs> an entire webinar focused on online exhibitions. And here's just a quick roadmap of what we are going to cover, a quick discussion of the rise of online exhibitions, a tutorial on our artwork archive exhibitions tool, um, and so how to create them, archive them, manage them, embed them onto your web website, share them out. Uh, and then interwoven into this and at the end, marketing and fundraising best practices when using online exhibitions. So it's not just about making them, but how to activate them and get them out there into the world. And then some Q&A. Okay, a lot of text. <laughs> COVID has made virtual connections a priority. Right, uh, we can all agree on that. Museums and other arts nonprofits use technology to create and distribute programming before COVID for sure. 
Uh, but before 2020, the online experience was like an add-on. It was second to the physical one, if you all agree, like an afterthought. Resources were concentrated more on our physical exhibits and in-person programming and events. And so the crazy phenomenon that we are faced with today has presented art institutions with no choice, and we have had to turn to the internet to provide access to exhibitions, events, fundraisers, and education. And within this pivot, a silver lining uh, was found. I'm a glasses half full type of person. And I think that honestly, COVID jumpstarted the switch to digital that many groups were hesitant to take. Um, and now we're seeing a lot of great things happening because of this switch. So now um, as uh, we, we have vaccines rolling out, it's no surprise that institutions are implementing a hybrid model of in-person paired with virtual programming and content distribution. The pandemic has normalized online access, uh, which ultimately has made more art more accessible, equitable, um, democratized, and in a lot of ways, resilient. So here, as I've been chatting, maybe you've been reading this slide, are a few benefits that we have seen from online exhibitions. So expanding your reach, growing your digital audience, making your collection more equitable and resilient, increasing artwork sales or monetary gifts, and boosting engagement. And we'll get into these uh, in a little bit more detail throughout the presentation. Um, so I have a few facts. So I was just thinking about, you know, the impact of online exhibitions in the past few years. Emily actually shared this uh, factoid with me, this, this statistic, thank you, Emily, that the Koenig Gallery in Berlin, Berlin actually had over 5,000 visitors to their opening weekend for a virtual exhibition, which is just mind boggling. You can't fit that many people in a room, like maybe not even um, in a quarter or a year. Uh, and so that is a great statistic of engagement and growing your digital audience. Uh, here we have that the arts and health program at Duke University uh, triple their art sales within their online exhibition. They have an exhibition that they use for fundraising. They moved it online. Um, and Jennifer says that they were bursting at the seams. They tripled their art sales in this just this one exhibition. Um, I saw this stat a while ago when uh, COVID uh, first um, hit the world, uh, that there was a 23% increase in social media followers uh, for the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. Uh, you know, they saw a decrease in in-person traffic, but uh, they pivoted, they went online, they focused their online resources, and they saw this uh, huge increase in social media following. And this was in 2020, so who knows where it is today. Um, I wasn't able to find the updated statistic because this came through, through the Alliance of American Museums at the time. Um, and then they definitely boosted their unique visitors to their website. Another great data point about tripling, well, another client of ours, Michigan Medicine's Gift of Arts program had nearly 600 votes on a recent hospital staff show. They do a best in show, a people's choice, a people's choice rather award. They usually collect those votes in a ballot box. They move the exhibition online and they tripled their usual engagement, which is really great. And we'll be showing that one later in the presentation. So um, big picture, online forums provide an opportunity to share without the constraints of a brick and mortar space. There's a lot that we can do with technology. You can share more information like I am in these slides. <laughs> you can embed videos, uh, share artists related content, provide more historical context, uh, with your online exhibitions. The internet is limited, limitless for better or for worse. So that's where we are as curators is figuring out what information we are going to share out um, and bring to our audiences. But you can use online exhibitions to exponentially expand your outreach in a number of creative ways. And here we have a few. So to um, complement your in-person attendance and programming, um, standing up online shows when you don't have resources uh, to uh, put on physical shows, using it as a fundraising um, effort. Uh, you can create virtual uh, field trips. I just read an article, I believe it was through AAM, about how teachers and um, administrators are um, eager for more virtual field trips um, in this complicated time. So provide resources for those communities. And then you'll also give access to those that are on the academic side and the museum side, and uh, you'll give access to faculty, students, scholars, the community members uh, to your database through online exhibitions. 
like I showed with uh, gifts of art. You can boost engagement with online voting. And then you can let technology tell your stories. So not limited to just the, the works and uh, labels in a physical space, but uh, show videos, like I said, um, audio clips, any other ephemera that um, is related to your exhibit. So I um, jokingly said this comment and I, I've made it stick. <laughs> so clicks with online exhibitions are the new footprints, not to replace footprints, right? But to complement them. Uh, and so online exhibits provide access and engage new audiences, like I've been saying. You're no longer limited by geography, time, or other restrictions. You know, people can view um, an online exhibition while sitting on their couch at the end of the day with their toddler by their side, maybe. Um, and I love that the focus is reaching out uh, rather than uh, bringing in, um, which both have great positives, um, but the fact that you can reach more audiences. I'm going to pause here because I have a, a great example to share that, you know, even if you have exhibitions um, on your website, uh, for those of you that said that you are, you're sharing out your online exhibitions, um, if they are on there as a listing, there is a benefit to being able to control uh, the creation of the exhibition and the sharing out at your level, which we'll get into with using Artwork Archives online exhibition. And the example is the Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, shared that the UNLV website uh, doesn't have the flexibility to show exhibition and installation views. So a major part of their museum's work is lost, all that effort that they put into it. But with Artwork Archive, they are able to show their exhibitions with all of the related ephemera and documentation, like I chatted about earlier. And they don't have to rely on the limitations that are usually brought upon by IT or their website. So just again, expanding out. And I'm gonna click out of the presentation right now and get into the Artwork Archive focus side of things. But what are these online exhibition tools that I, I speak of? So for those that have been using Artwork Archive, welcome back. Here is um, our demo view. I'm going to walk through uh, the exhibitions. This is within Artwork Archive. I wanna show you what an exhibition looks like after you have created it. I'm on Artwork Archive's public profile. I'll be getting into the public profile and other uh, ways to create access to your collection in another webinar in a month. So stay tuned. It's all about online access. We're focusing on just online exhibitions here. But when you create online exhibitions within your Artwork Archive account, you can make them public via the public profile, uh, which is a part of your account. It's hosted on our discovery platform, a part of our website. Um, so another great place to reach new audiences. Um, people also find you in Google searches because you get to piggyback off of our great SEO that we have generated in the past decade. Um, the Lilly Museum of Art in Reno actually shared that they have had a number of uh, new visitors to their website coming from their public profile, their exhibitions page on the public profile from Artwork Archive. Um, so I'll just click in. Here in the exhibitions tab on the left-hand side, to be brought to the list of exhibitions that this demo account has created. I'm gonna click into the 2021 summer exhibit. We have a carousel, installation shots. You can upload any type of media um, and assets that you would like. And you can also embed videos uh, via YouTube or Vimeo, really great. And they can watch it right here from the carousel. They stay on the page, they're not brought elsewhere. So this could be a walkthrough, an interview with the curator, with the artist, um, whatever it may be, a time-lapse of the installation of the show, because there's so much that goes into creating the show. Here we have the description of the exhibit. exhibit. You can view the artworks by click into a piece you can see that beautiful hero image. I can see additional detail shots. If it's a painting, maybe a detail shot of the painting. I can learn more about the artwork. And then there's a few buttons here, which I'll get into, but the public can inquire about the, the artwork, send you a message. This will go into your artwork archive account. 
Um, if you are selling artworks like Duke did um, for a fundraiser, then you will receive a purchase request and you can connect with the buyer. And they can also share it uh, via social media. So again, um, creating dynamic engagement, um, helping your exhibition, your institution, your gallery get out there into the world. When you view the exhibition, you can also view it by the artists that are participating. So if I click into Joanne, get a nice lovely image of her, her bio, I can click into her website, her social media links. And then you can also create rooms, which are like categories. Or if you think about a multi-room gallery installation, um, you know, the rooms that you walk through um, to experience the exhibit. So creating some more dynamic, dynamicism. Did I say that word right? Probably didn't. <laughs> but here you can see the, the grouping that is within abstract forms. Another, so I showed um, our demo account. Let's, let's see some real ones, <laughs> some real live museums and galleries. So I, I mentioned the Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art at UNLV. They use exhibitions. If I click into this exhibition, again, carousel, photo credits, They do a really great job of including a lot of rich detail. So their schedule, the information about the exhibit, and then you can include hyperlinks. So they've included a sound cloud playlist, which is really cool. You can view the artworks by clicking. You can learn more about the artwork. Another example. The Fulton County Public Art Program, we have some public art programs here, welcome. Uh, they have an exhibition called Central in Focus and they you know, show that it is um, in conjunction with an on-site show that is in their central library. And here we have beautiful photography. So if I click into this piece, click into Aaron, you can learn more about him. Then uh, lastly, let's see, did I lose? There we go. I wanted to show the Lily Museum of Art. So I mentioned that they have expanded their outreach uh, by having a public profile. They use the exhibitions tool just to give you um, another view, another sense of a museum and how these installation shots really just give you a beautiful view into their galleries. And again, you can click in. Here we have a beaded basket. It doesn't have to always be just fine art. There's a lot of great objects, cultural heritage that you are preserving. And here they have some rich information about that piece. So I wanted to bring up the Lilly Museum of Art because um, if I go back and click into our artist tab, With online tools, you are also preserving the legacy of the artists in your collection, uh, whether they are living or deceased. And so for contemporary artists, they'll appreciate that they have a more permanent spotlight through your arts organization. It's not just a one and done. So we're hearing from many of our clients that people across the country are getting involved and looking at pieces through online exhibitions that they couldn't do before. Um, and so, you know, I've been showing you various artist pages that are linked from the exhibitions, uh, which is really helpful um, for the artists, for them getting their name out there, legacy, and then also for you preserving the legacy of your institution, the work that you are doing, and the artists you support. And um, to that point, another benefit of these online exhibitions is, again, from the Marjorie Barrick Museum of Art. They are the only art museum in Las Vegas, if you can believe it. Um, so they feel a great need to their community of artists living and working in Las Vegas. And so the technology using Artwork Archive is very helpful um, for them, whether it be traveling shows um, or for researchers or scholars that are interested in their, their local artists or the artists in their collections. And they are able to diversify their programming and offerings uh, without overextending staff or capacity. So that's a key point here is that with online exhibitions, 
Um, it's, it, it takes a fraction of the time. Um, and using online exhibitions, the exhibitions tool at Artwork Archive, we have been told by our clients that it saves them so much admin time um, and headache and everything is organized in one place. Uh, before I get into, you know, how, how do you create these online exhibitions, I just want to show one more thing. You can also, you can re be reliant on the public profile and link people to this public profile to your exhibitions tab to um, link to the individual exhibitions, but you can also embed these exhibitions onto your website. You can actually embed uh, most of the entire public profile, your interactive map, um, your collections, your artist pages. You might just click into the map. If you have an exhibition that's across the city, um, people can view the artworks um, in um, a really dynamic way and view it physically if they're driving around. But here are two examples. One, um, I love uh, Cedars. They are a nonprofit that works with um, adults with disabilities. And so they have an online exhibition. And so they have embedded the works click in, I can learn more. And they're also selling the artworks of their, their resident artists. I just love that. I, my son is really into cats right now. <laughs> um, and then this uh, is just a great example of how easy it is to, um, if you don't want to embed uh, Duke, which I will show later, just links to all of their beautiful exhibits that they have from their, from their website so that people can view um, the exhibitions that they have hosted. Bunnies, oh my gosh, what a cute, what a cute day on our work archive. <laughs> okay, um, here as I click out, another great example of a really robust artist profile page through the exhibition. We can learn more about Emily and the artworks of hers that are in the Lilly Museum of Art exhibition. Okay, so let's click in, let's, let's make something. Um, I will show you what one looks like. Let's go into the 2021 summer exhibition. I'm a visual person, so I like seeing where, what I'm moving towards. <laughs> so you can keep track of all the important dates, contact information, description, notes, the pieces, the rooms. So this is the rooms category that I showed earlier. If I scroll, this is where I keep track of all that great exhibition media, supporting videos. And additional files. You can attach additional files here and then elsewhere throughout Artwork Archive to keep track of your exhibition checklist, your loan agreements. And then um, one other thing to note right here is we also have an activity log. So if you are working on this exhibition with other teammates, you can see who has updated the exhibition and when. Also great if you're wrangling interns or, or volunteers. Well, let's create one. I got some really good feedback from Pat uh, that um, it's helpful, uh, especially in these webinars, to, to go through the process. Um, and I will try to go as slowly as possible. Um, I always try to not speak like a, a NASCAR host as well. So hopefully everyone is, is following along. But here within exhibitions, I'm going to click New Exhibition. You give it a title. It's actually the only field that's required. So let's call it the Winter. You guys can see how I spell. <laughs> then you can also note if it is a solo show or a group show. For this use case, let's make it a solo show. We're featuring a local artist. Your description, so your didactic text about the exhibition, showcasing a wonderful local artist. No, no word limit, um, whatever you would like as your didactic text. Phone, email. Website fee, um, if this is a traveling show um, and you are paying for it and it's coming into your institution, you can track that. Um, and similarly, whether it's your own details or if you are working with another partner institution, you can keep track of that information as well for all the admin. If you are working with curators from outside of your institution or you have multiple curators within your um, organization, you can keep track of that. And if it's a juror show, you can include that information. So I'm the curator. And Emily, you are the juror. Emily has extensive experience working in galleries, so she, I, I trust her within the juror position. Then you have a few options. You can log the location type. So is it on site? Is it only online? Or is it traveling? Is it elsewhere? 
So let's say it's on site. I'm just going to check my time to make sure that we are tracking on time. We are great. Um, without getting too much in the weeds, for those that are new to Artwork Archive, one of the great tools is that you can also track locations within your Artwork Archive account. So if your artworks are spread across a campus, um, if you have artworks out on loan, you can know where they are at all times. So uh, for existing location, let's say that it is at the Conference Center. And you can always create a new location. Um, so maybe this is a new part of campus that hasn't shown um, a PC yet or a new terminal in your airport. Um, you can just enter the location name. And then by having this box checked, what's great is that you have just created a new location record. You don't have to double enter. And now the artworks will be assigned to that location during your exhibition dates. Yay. All right, exhibition dates. We're really behind. It starts tomorrow. Um, it's really short. It ends at the end of the month. Reception date. Are we still all meeting in person, whether it be virtual or uh, uh, in person? Maybe it's next Thursday. Submission deadline. So um, are you, is this a call for, for artists? Um, are students dropping off their, their artworks? So you can, have you can keep track of the submission deadlines, when you have to notify the artists, delivery dates, pickup dates, also great for uh, works that are on loan. And what's also wonderful is these dates are going to be synced if I click open your schedule. Whenever you create a date, a, re uh, a reminder will be set within your schedule. And you can sync it to your calendar. You'll get an email from us every Monday morning of what's coming up to help you keep on track with those exhibitions. Other information. So throughout Artwork Archive, we have descriptions, which can be public. And then we have notes, which are always private. Um, so this could be financial information, um, administrative tasks that uh, you need to keep track of, any information about the exhibit that you don't want public if you make this public in the future. I mentioned those exhibition rooms, those categories. This is where you create them. If I just click the button, it can be, I'm doing a solo artist, so maybe it's her early career. And then I can have a description. This is all about her in her 20s. Oh, to be 20 again. And Emily, did a did a chat just come up? Are we all are we all good? I think we're okay. Okay, good. <laughs> I saw you going to the, the keyboard. <laughs> Emily's my my wing woman. It's great. And so you can add additional exhibition rooms and then you can move the order um, the flow so maybe I wrote legacy first I'm like oh no I want to start with her early career you can just toggle and drag if you make this exhibition public this is where you um, control all of that so first and foremost uh, you want to check this box to make it public your public profile also has to be activated, which is located here on your left hand side. It's just a check of the button to turn your public profile on. And then you have the decision of how you want to order the artworks when they view. And then when people click into the exhibition, you have the option to decide what they see first. Is it all the artworks? Is it the artist page? Is it the rooms page? Here is where you add all that great supporting image and graphics, all that media. So you can add images, not only from your desktop, but from um, Dropbox, Google Drive. Uh, what's great about Artwork Archive is it is accessible from anywhere. So if you are on your phone, you are in the artist studio, you can pull up the, take a photo of the artwork um, and upload it right to the exhibition right there. Or if you are coordinating alone, you have just flown to DC uh, and you are working with your partner uh, on that. If you have a tablet, phone, your laptop, you can upload the images from there. You can access your Artwork Archive account from anywhere. And then you can also upload, or rather add, I should say, the video links. So uh, first and foremost, the videos, in order to have them included in those carousels, uh, is you need a Vimeo link or a YouTube link. And so you can just copy and paste the link here. Again, you can add a caption so that when they're viewing uh, the video um, in the carousel, they can learn more. 
And then we note here, you can add the artwork to the exhibit after it has been created. So I'm gonna click save. What did I not do? Ah, I just wanna click this out. Yay, my exhibition has been saved. And here's where you assign the pieces to your show. So if I click that, you'll see that you can, with a click of a button, add multiple artworks to a particular group, if you've created those groups, so I have the early career, or to the entire exhibit. Let's go to early career. I wanna start filling in that part of the exhibit. Filters, so this logic is found throughout the platform, really great for finding artworks, filtering by artworks, creating reports, uh, collections, whatever it may be. Um, the filter I'm gonna use is this is a solo show. So I am going to create a show for all of Joanne's artworks. If I click Joanne, you can see I have all of her artworks. And then um, with that scroll, you can see all the other filters that are available, location, donor, you're doing a show um, uh, based off your donations or mediums or subject matter or co collections, which are groupings that you have created within your account. So if I add all those pieces, assign them, and now I have all those pieces in there. If I had an additional room or I decided I don't wanna put them in a the room, you can edit right here. You can add files. Maybe this is um, a contract with the artist, loan agreement. You can add any type of file. And so yeah, that is the creation of an exhibition. If I click back up, one thing I wanted to note here as I you know, scroll through the, the various exhibitions that are within this account is that with the exhibition tool, you can easily collaborate in person or remotely, virtually, when you're planning your exhibitions. Um, so multiple, multiple people can have access to your Artwork Archive account. It's great for project management. You can give your curators or your colleagues the tools to organize upcoming shows. And whether you're loaning artworks in or out, you're doing this from your permanent collection, your, your inventory at your gallery, at your commercial gallery, um, you'll have a detailed and compre comprehensive overview of the details. You will be able to track and plan it all. And then you'll be able to share all that information out easily. So you can create an exhibition report. Um, you can, if I click into this exhibit, you can create a QR lab code labels or artwork labels for this show if it's a physical show and quickly generate those for your exhibit. And so a big, a big time saver. And another, another time saver is when organizing these exhibitions, another tool that we have at Artwork Archive that is really popular is the artist upload tool. So if you are soliciting artworks for a show, if you're having a call or you're just coordinating with artists um, or, loaner, or um, various uh, loans, donors, you don't have to populate the Artwork Archive account yourself. You don't have to add the artworks into the account. Um, whomever you're working with can essentially send over the information into your account. Artists can share their artworks, their information, the images associated with them and the other people that you are working with. Um, so, so just to give you a quick walkthrough of what that looks like, to do that, first and foremost, the let's use the artist, needs to be a contact within your contacts. So this is another aspect of Artwork Archive. Um, I will be, we have actually um, blog articles about how a CRM is really helpful for our, our organizations, but I digress. Here we have uh, Joanne, the artist, the artist that I'm doing the show on. You can see all this great information about her, what artworks of hers are in your collection. But if I scroll down, you'll see allow uploads for this contact. So first and foremost, the person needs to be a contact. Then when you are editing or creating the contact record, you turn this on. When you turn it on, the system will generate a URL and we'll have the artist's name. And then you assign a password. It can be unique to the artist or it can be unique to the exhibition or you can just have the same password for everybody. Um, when you copy and share this to the artist, they um, 
you know, click onto the URL. They're brought to a form online. They're not in your account. They're, they're separate. They're on a form and they update their contact information. Great. People are moving, um, getting married, getting divorced, whatever it may be. They um, send you the images, all the information about the artwork. And once they have submitted it to you, it is in your account and you can assign it to your exhibition. Even better, if you are working with an artwork archive artist, we have thousands of artists that use our platform. Um, they don't have to go through the form. When you generate this link, they can actually just share all the information directly from their artwork archive account. Um, and so they select the artworks, they click send and voila, with a click of a button, all the information that they have spent time populating gets sent into your account. And the good news is it's most likely accurate. <laughs> so um, Jennifer Duke says, you know, sometimes coordinating shows, details um, get missed, there's typos. Um, but if you're working with an artist from their account, most likely it is accurate because it's their artwork archive account, their inventory. So all that information in your exhibit and account will be accurate. Let's see, is there anything that I missed um, within that? I don't believe so. So if I click back into exhibitions, another note to make is that you are also documenting your historical exhibitions and preserving an archive of your organization's legacy. And so, you know, organizations have turnover, people leave, new colleagues join the team, time passes. And so this way you'll have a comprehensive archive of your organization's exhibition programming, details and the impact. And so it's also great for grant applications too. Um, I know that the Marjorie Barrett just completed a, a grant and they said that it was really helpful to be able to create reports, include those PDFs right into their applications and have access to this information here and to send it to their you know, fundraising teams. Okay. Ooh, lots, lots of good stuff. So I'm gonna go back into the PowerPoint. I have a few slides that are just supposed to be helpful after I send uh, the presentation. Um, so we already covered how you can promote your artists. Here is a great example of an artist page from Fulton. I mentioned how you can manage an archives, manage an archive exhibits virtually. Um, and we have a link to the artist upload tool help doc if you're interested in that for those artwork archive users, clients that are on the webinar. And here is an example of that artist upload tool that I mentioned along with our tutorials of how to use it. And a great article that Emily wrote about why artists and art dealers love this direct upload tool. And a lot of links, <laughs> some further reading, some homework. Um, here are some resources to help you after the presentation if you are interested. There, there are articles about how to use online exhibitions, as well as tutorials um, for the Artwork Archive uh, clients on how to get the most out of what's in your account. Okay, so to like the really fun stuff too. Um, I mentioned earlier that online exhibitions are a great way to boost engagement. Um, and so here I have a screenshot from the Gifts of Art Galleries. They had, as I mentioned, an employee art exhibition and they um, asked people to vote for their favorite um, artist. And so if I click back out to, let me find their page. Here is the exhibit. You can see that Mark already won, um, but if I click, and uh, it's no longer available, which is also great. You can change your exhibitions after they've already been um, up and live. Um, there was an inquire button and Michigan prompted uh, viewers to click the inquire button and vote and say that that was their vote for their favorite artwork. Then um, the Gifts of Art program received all of those votes within the Artwork Archive inbox tallied them. Um, we actually created a report for them of all of the, the votes. They found their winner and they were able to announce it. Um, and so saved a lot of time and solicited some great engagement online. People were not reliant on being within the, the hospital. Let's see. If I go back to my slideshow, sorry for clicking in and out. 
I mentioned fundraising, selling artworks online, a lot of text, um, but I'll talk big picture and then show you the, the process um, on the, the back end. Um, big picture, um, we have seen our clients get really creative, bring their exhibitions online to sell artworks um, as part of a fundraiser to generate revenue. Um, and so they, um, I had that great uh, stat from Duke. They tripled their art sales in, one, in their Winter Fest exhibition, which I will show you. Um, there's also the Polizac Museum uh, in Florida, a small museum that has a, a plein air paint out every year during COVID. They could not have it in person. Uh, and so they transitioned to an online uh, exhibition and sold artworks via Artwork Archive. And you know, to no surprise, selling artworks online tremendously helps nonprofits raise dollars, right? Um, and commercial galleries can make more sales online as well. Some other benefits that we have heard through this process is that you're not limited by space. So the arts coordinator at Duke recommends that her artists submit as many artworks um, that they'd like to sell since they are not limited to physical space. And the artists are generating a lot of sales because they're not limited to you know, a four by eight space. Um, similarly, with the Polizac Museum, they were able to show, show more artworks um, than their four by eight space within their gallery. Um, so artists could sh show and sell more art. Our clients are also saying that online sales are easy, easy. Interested buyers can contact them directly through the website, through the exhibition, and then they can establish a relationship with that, that, that buyer. And our clients have also seen people buying artworks from outside of the community. So they're not limited to just in-person visitors, like I said, with the geographic boundaries. So whether it was people who had moved away or those that had family in the area, there were new patrons that engaged online. Um, as a brief overview of our online sales toolkit that is accessible via online exhibitions um, and other aspects of the platform, the public profile, the website embed, private rooms. If you're selling artwork, if you're interested in selling artwork, we make it really easy. We've simplified the process of making those sales, generating invoices and processing payments so you can get paid quickly and make those connections and save them within our work archive. So interested buyers can request to purchase an artwork. Um, and like I mentioned, they can do so not only from your exhibition, but from your public profile or private rooms, which is a tool I'll share in a future webinar. So let me show you that flow. Do, do, do. So here we have the wonderful exhibition from Duke. Winterfest. Oops, not Winterfest. I clicked into another great exhibition, Winterfest. And they sold artworks. I can click in. I want to buy these beautiful little tops. I can click the purchase link and send a message. Let me show you that on our platform so you can see the flow. Mm -hmm. A lot of clicks, sorry everyone. So I'm gonna go into this show. I would like to buy this big, bold sculpture. I'm gonna enter my name. I am not a robot. Send request, I'm gonna move my little bar and just walk my way. Great, purchase request was sent. So now if I go into my Artwork Archive account, you'll see if I refresh, this little one, there's a new message in my inbox. I can access it here or on the left-hand side from inbox, I also see the one. And here's at the top. So I can see it's new, I have not seen it yet. It's a purchase request for this artwork. I can see the message. I can see who asked. I can see where it came from. So I can see that it's from the public profile. You can view the request. You can reply directly from here. Um, or, you know, we're selling artworks as part of a fundraiser. What's great is you can create an invoice right from 
your artwork archive account. But that contact management piece, if it's a new contact, you can create a new contact record for them. You don't have to double enter. And then you can, or, and, or you can also sync it to existing contacts. And then here you can generate an invoice. You can add additional invoice line items. So maybe um, they also requested um, that it's, um, you come and install it or the frame is not included or um, you want, there is an additional line item that you need to include. There's an um, additional uh, print that comes with it. You can add that new sale. And then you can include payment buttons. So we have a PayPal integration in which if you utilize PayPal um, to accept payments, you can um, add your PayPal email in your account settings, and then it will be added to your invoices. And so then when they receive this invoice, uh, your buyer can uh, pay via the PayPal link. They can pay by credit card, their PayPal account, um, debit card. And then when they do so and they pay, that will automatically be updated within your artwork archive account. You can also allow partial payments if it's a really big piece. Then you can always see your invoices and the status of them. So if they're pending, which ones have been paid. So that's really helpful for online sales, the transaction piece of it. And the last little bit when thinking about online exhibitions, I was thinking, I was talking about you know, numbers with sales. There's also the reporting piece. So a question is, you know, how do we measure the impact of this digital world? We're all used to measuring the impact of our in-person shows, um, you know, clicking how many people are coming in, ticket sales, um, having surveys uh, there um, for our attendees. Uh, I've heard these best practices from our clients and they're really smart. Um, what's great is with these online exhibitions, when you embed them onto your website, you can track visitors via you know, a Google Analytics. You can see the visitors to your site. Within Google Analytics, you can also collect demographic data. If you are sharing these exhibitions in a, a newsletter, you can use those newsletter opens and clicks um, as a data point. You can solicit feedback from viewers with surveys online. And then when you collect all of this information, you can store it within the additional files section of the exhibit. So you have all of the impact, um, all the numbers uh, for that. If you have to um, share the impact for a grant application or you're sending it to the board, you have all of that good data um, along with your exhibition report, along with images right in your artwork archive account to send out. So here's just some like, good feels <laughs> to end on, um, but how online exhibitions can help you meet your goals, whether you are a commercial gallery, a nonprofit, a museum, a hospital, an airport, um, a small art center, whatever it may be. Here are a few of our wonderful clients and how they have said online exhibitions have helped them. New patrons, being too successful with sales, <laughs> connecting to the public and your staff, and having a, you know, a virtual show for people to engage with. Here's the link to our blog. Um, Emily, if you could just put in the chat, it'd be really great. The link to the blog, um, as well as the link to our YouTube channel. So that, you know, if you want to learn more, uh, we have articles that Emily uh, writes, I write, we have a great content team. Uh, so you can learn more about online exhibitions and, and other aspects of um, art collections. And here we are, you know, if you're new to us, we're, we're here to help. Feel free to sign up for our newsletter. You can learn more about how we work with organizations here at the, the link provided. We have a free 30-day uh, trial. I also conduct demos all the time, walkthroughs of the platform, uh, including online exhibitions and our other great features. And um, a key point to make is nonprofits receive a lifetime 30% discount. Um, our plans start at just $29 a month. Um, we believe in accessibility, accessibility of technology, and um, price is also an accessibility point. So making sure that nonprofits have the tools to preserve, share out uh, their legacy and their missions. Here's my email. You can always contact me if you have any follow-up questions and a link to our YouTube channel. And with that, we can go into the, the Q&A.
Let's see. Emily, do you mind? Oh, you've answered them all <laughs> as I was chatting. Are there any that you would, so if everyone, um, you can see the Q&A, uh, you can open and see the dialog box, but um, is there like a recap that you would like to, to share? Please feel free to ask more questions, everybody. We do have about seven minutes. So one thing I think we should point out is right now exhibitions is only available to organization account holders, correct? Yes. That being said, we are very flexible and we try to work with all of our subscribers to find options that work for them. So we did have some uh, visitors to this webinar who are on artist accounts. And uh, I said that, you know, we should talk more about ways that they could utilize this feature. And we are discussing potentially rolling it out for other accounts right now, though, however, you must have an organization account to utilize public exhibition. Yes, I should have said that in the beginning. Since we work with artists, collectors, and organizations, this tool is for our organization clients. Art, as an aside, artists can actually track their exhibitions um, within their accounts, but there is no public facing side of it because this is for those that are being curated by the, the institution. Um, I'm looking at um, Ashley's question. Oh, no, you're just answering. Thank you, Ashley. At, uh, I showed one of her testimonials, uh, the San Jose Museum of Quilts and Textiles. Um, if anyone is in the area, an incredible institution, um, incredible work. And um, Ashley, you, you are a force to be reckoned with. You've done a great job utilizing Artwork Archive. Um, we will be sending out a recording of this presentation. Uh, just give us about 24 hours. So you will all have it in an email before the weekend and we'll include links and other resources that Elysian has covered. Um, Erica was really interested in uh, utilizing the exhibitions feature uh, also for open calls. And as you had shown, like that is possible with a direct upload link. Um, mm -hmm. But if you are planning on utilizing that for an open call, I would just suggest that you reach out to us first. We can give you a little one-on-one -on -one guidance uh, from what we've learned from other users who have uh, actually implemented that for open calls. We have some best practices that we can share. And uh, Erica, regarding your question about adding a survey, I have to say like Google survey forms are really easy to use and wonderful. Um, you know, right now we don't have a survey implemented within the system, but any form that you get back from Google, uh, you know, is easy to read. So there are little add-ons that we can also like give you some tips on. Yeah, yeah, and um, Duke actually, I, I keep using Jennifer as a great example. They they solicit artworks uh, via a call and they have a great workflow. Um, I also have an article about them um, on the blog about um, their base, best case, best practices. That's what I'm looking for. Um, but yeah, again, as Emily mentioned, feel free to contact us. We have great workflows that we've seen from our clients to help you save time. Um, I see a few other questions. Uh, Lloyd, can you, you have uh, both an artist and an organization account? Yes, um, you are an artist that works with a gallery. We actually have a lot of curators and art, arts managers that um, are artists themselves. So you can have uh, multiple accounts. Um, if you do have multiple accounts, please contact, if you would like multiple accounts, please contact us. Um, we would love to provide you with um, a discount um, since you'll be juggling too. And um, our accounts are created by email, uh, so you would just need a unique email. So the email for your gallery would be for your gallery organization account, and then you would have your um, artist one. Joy, what about collaborations of exhibitions between complementary artists? Yes, uh, so that's the great thing about um, the accessibility within Artwork Archive. So you can, uh, depending on your relationship um, and how you work with these organizations, um, you can give them access to your Artwork Archive account if you are uh, coordinating uh, together. Um, you can also, if you don't wanna do that, you can use Artwork Archive to get all the information in and then share out with your, your partner. Um, and so you can create reports, you can create private rooms, which is a viewing of um, curated artworks that you have put together. Um, and then as I showed with that inquire button, um, there can be a dialogue back and forth within your inbox coordinating. Um, did I address that? Yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, Patrick, formatting options for QR code labels. Yes, it is in the pipeline. Um, Emily is actually um, a really talented designer as well and is working with our product and design team on updating our reports. 
for those that are new to Artwork Archive, what's really cool um, that I love um, about working with Artwork Archive is we're constantly updating the platform. Um, and so we're rolling out um, releases all the time, product updates, like almost every day. <laughs> so the other thing too, is we have an incredible customer support team. Everyone uh, plays a part. And so you can contact us at us via chat on the website. You can contact the entire team via team at Artwork Archive. And for those on the free trial and um, those that are subscribed, like give us your feedback. Tell us what you like, um, don't like. Um, we constantly innovate on the platform based on your feedback. Let's see, um, Wanda, great question about charging artists a commission. You can keep track of um, you know, the breakdown of your, of your sales, what goes to the artist and what does not. Um, that is a great example of like, let's connect um, after the webinar and I can show you how to do that and how our organizations have done so. So for those that um, don't know what Wanda's question is, um, they charge a 25% commission as many of us do. And so showing that in the sales reports, logging that in Artwork Archive so you can report back to the artist. And then you can also keep track of that for your overall organization revenue um, generation. And uh, tax season is upon us. So you can also keep track of all that good detail. Let's see. Uh, we have one minute left. What else do we have? Um, I would love the ability to customize reports rather than use that are, those that are provided by Wanda. Let us know um, what type of report you would like. Uh, for everyone uh, that is new to Artwork Archive, we have a variety of reports, inventory, tear sheet, QR, uh, wall labels, contact reports. You can export all your data to a spreadsheet at any time. Um, portfolio pages, uh, whatever. If there is not something within there that you need, let us, let us know. Again, we are um, doing some work to our report generation uh, product, part of the product. So happy to get that feedback. I think I... Great, thanks, Keith. Okay, and I'm just looking at, um, at the chat. All right, everybody. We, yeah, and we also have um, an artist uh, webinar coming up that Emily mentioned, I believe, um, about taxes. So we are at time. This was hopefully helpful, educational, maybe a little entertaining. Um, I thank you all for taking the time to learn more about Artwork Archive. Uh, Emily and I are so lucky to meet you all in this virtual space. And I can't wait to see all the incredible exhibitions that you're going to bring out into the world using hopefully our platform. Um, feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thank you, everybody. Bye now.